Birth of a Demon King Part 2. The Horde, led by Imugawa Yoshimato, had been making several stops to unconquered castles along the Mikawa and Owari provinces. Their original destination was to head to Kyoto to help stabilize the diminished Ashikaga shogunate. The marching army consisted of an estimated 25,000 men, from samurai cavalry, Ashigura spear units, musket men, archers, and included siege equipment. This was truly a force to be reckoned with in the central regions of Japan. After nine years of civil turmoil amongst the Oda, the clan would finally unify in 1559 CE. Several months later, in the summer of 1560, this Iwagawa Horde army began marching north towards Owari. With so few small vassals and a devastating civil war, the Oda clan was in absolutely no business in fighting any clan, especially against one that amassed tens of thousands of men. A measly estimated 2,000 to 3,000 men were under Oda Nobunaga's command. The Oda clan gathered to plan a defensive strategy, some wanting to make a castle stand at Kyosu. Oda Nobunaga decided out of sheer brilliance, or out of a death wish, that the best way to handle an army of this magnitude, they would have to plan an offensive strategic maneuver. Nobunaga sent a small scouting party to gain insight on the horde's location and movement around the southern border. The Oda knew their territory well. When they discovered that the Imugawa forces were resting at a nearby gorge called Denegaku Hazama, the Oda immediately sprung into action. Oda Nobunaga began setting up his decoy plot by creating a standing hay figure army clad in peasant armor and flags all throughout the forest, with one or two men at each campsite. This deceptive tactic would confuse the Imugawa scouts into thinking that the Oda had greater numbers than they had previously expected. So the Imagawa waited and set up encampment in the valley. The Oda scouts watched and to understand their enemy's frontline formation, which usually consisted of low-class spearmen in the front and the high-ranking generals at the rear. The Oda forces stationed another dummy army on top of one of the hills beside the gorge at a nearby Buddhist temple called Zen Shoji. As the Imagawa scouts bit into the decoy, the direction of the Imagawa army focused towards the temple. The Oda managed to maneuver around the Imugawa force, passing through the woods covertly, and came up right behind the horde. Now the Oda had their own strategic vantage point against the Imugawa generals and senior officers, which were devising their own strategic approach just down below. As recorded, it seemed to have been a hot summer afternoon. The Imugawa were celebrating their previous victory just days before against a small Oda war party, and were beginning to cut the heads off the fallen Awari samurai. This enraged Oda Nobunaga, but a thunderstorm created by the humidity of the day began rolling in, hindering the attack of the Oda. Soon after the downpour of rain subsided, the Oda striked. Advancing down the hill undetected, it wasn't until Imugawa Yoshimoto heard fighting breaking out. Thinking it was between some of his own men, he exited his tent and found himself fighting enemy Oda samurai. Imugawa Yoshimoto and his senior officers were decapitated as the rest of the horde either ran or stood still in shock as their daimu had perished before them. An ultimatum was given. Either the rest of the 25,000 warriors be disgraced for allowing their lord to die a dishonorable death and commit seppuku, or join the Oda forces. Most of them chose the latter. This was the beginning of one of the most powerful clans in Japanese Sengoku period. With the decimation of the Imugawa clan, the Matsudera clan from Makawa province became vassals to the Oda, which would eventually become the Takugawa clan under Iwasu. Also, Hideyoshi, one of Nobunaga's sandal bearers, became established as a fierce Ishigara warrior during this period, moving him up the chain of command. His story, though, is for another video. <laughs> <laughs>